Hi guys and welcome to Born Anime. It's your girl Bruca. And Big Boy Summer here. Solo leveling, episodes 10 and 11. Throughout episode 10, we saw that Jin Ho and Jin Ryu were tackling these sea rank gates that Jin Ho obviously bought. It's basically Jin Ryu doing all the fighting and Jin Ho doing all the cleaning. And throughout all of that, with the collecting of the mana stones and the fighting of the beast, and them two just going on their little adventures inside the dungeons, we saw a little bromance going on. These two are basically buddies now because they're always having a laugh and a joke. And even though their personalities are totally different, you can see how them two are getting along now, especially being in the face of monsters all the time. Agreed. I mean, Jin Ho was really an annoyance when they first met up. But you can see through the little montage that we got that they're getting a better relationship. So you know that he's going to be around for some time. It's nice to see um, Jin Woo actually socialize. You know? <laughs> he's a bit of a loner. Manager Anne has basically realised that Jinru is is quite special and is trying to recruit him for the White Tiger Guild. And I'm gonna let Ruka take it away. Finances are clearly more important than lives because this dude, with very very little investigation, found out that the C rank dungeons that were being bought out were being completed by really low grade hunters. So he already made really great leaps before he even went over there to go check. Saw that Jin Wu was there and had been a part of the double dungeon, but he had figured that out from before as well and tries to speak to him. So tell me why. If this if this man can do this with very little resources available and very little he couldn't even make proper decisions on his own. He can investigate and find out about Jin Wu. But the investigation team, who he has interacted with multiple times, still don't get it. He went, this guy is a reawakener. Straight away. <laughs> straight away. No hesitation. Straight away. This guy is a reawakener. And the Eugene Construction Guild that is about to be formed is trying to hire him. And this is, this is my chance to snipe him, basically. And he was like, this guy's a super rookie, he's a lot better than I thought, and blah 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 blah. Look, Ruka's right, the investigation team is trash, because if you can have like two pieces of document and just make that leap, which is pretty accurate considering in the world that they live in, it's the only conclusion they're going to jump to, then what are you doing as the investigation team? It's in their job title. And they still can't get it right. Do you know what? Right. You have one job. <laughs> Investigate. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's move on. So Jido has been basically buying up all the dungeons that we said earlier. Now, the reason why he wants to do this is so that he can actually get the guild master's license and actually become a guild master, start up his own guild, but he needs 20 dungeons before he can take the test in the first place. So this is why we saw him try and get Jin Wu to be part of the situation and help him get to that goal and so Jin Wu basically said I'm only going to do it if I can solo him basically and so they agreed now this is the fruits of their labor they're attracting all of these I guess the fringes of the hunters the ones that are ill the ones that are old the ones that are sick and the ones that are too young and paying them a lot of money per dungeon in order to go through and basically say that they were part of the team but they get to play around and do nothing. I think it's a brilliant idea that they stole from, you know, the, the Serpent Guild that they had to face with the other episode. I even like the scamming action of Jin Wu at the end, just brilliant. destroying Anne. Um, but also, about this Monopoly, we saw that when Jin Wu had to go off to his quest, um, we were with Jin Ho a little bit at home while his family was discussing what he was doing with these dungeons and his brother clearly does not approve and thinks that whatever he's doing is not going to work but obviously they don't know about Jin Woo and his power like how powerful he is and also his dad didn't say much it's very hard to gauge the type of dynamics that they have in their family because they're quite rich and they have a lot of 
seems like there's a lot of emphasis on like etiquette and being proper like even the way they were sitting at the dinner table it wasn't very homely so it was nice to see the other side of Jin Ho. He's so happy-go-lucky, but this really adds an extra dimension. He clearly is trying so desperately to be recognized by his family members. He's the youngest one. He probably has struggled to find his thing, you know? Yeah. Like who he is, and they clearly don't rate him as highly. Not without reason, to be honest. He's not the strongest. He's very green when it comes to dungeons. It's to be expected that he wouldn't be good and that they wouldn't want him to risk his life, especially because he doesn't have to, considering they're many. Yeah, I mean, he's he literally doing this, going against the grain, knowing full well that if anything goes wrong, he'll be looked after his entire life. And it's cool, because like, we like him. Guys, 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 I know you're enjoying this episode, but I know a lot of you aren't actually subscribed. So all you gotta do is just press the subscribe button. It's right there. Don't forget to ding that bell. I've never played an RPG where the job chain quest had a free test or something like that where, oh by the way you can't leave, by the way you can't heal, by the way you can't do this, good luck. Wait, what? And then he ran through and it was just getting like wave after wave of guys just coming after him and that was cool. And he, he, he learned how to deal with different types of people and that was great. Then he fell into Ifrit's lap and then when I tell you this fight, this fight was something else. If it was giving him the Molly Whopper to see it, it reminded me of, you know, in Naruto when Sasuke went to try and get the eight tail and Killer B was just slumping him. It just reminded me of that, but better. Because, like, if it was just giving him the business, fam. Look, not being able to heal and all of that stuff, I would like to be told before I accept this quest. Like, you gave me an option and you let me think about it, yet you didn't give me the pertinent information to actually make a, a proper decision? Are you mad? Like, I would have made sure I'm super refreshed. I would have I would have been practicing. I would definitely would have finished my daily quest before I went up in there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm just saying that this is information I should know before, not when I'm already locked inside and cannot leave. And then on top of that, it's not like this was some kind of easy thing. I don't even know why they're calling it a job change quest. It feels like a trial. It's, it is a, a trial. A quest. survival trial. <laughs> Run <laughs> the gauntlet to <laughs> get to the end. There is no end. <laughs> like, it's like they attacked where he was at his weakest. And he was right in saying that it seems like they're taking from his past fights that he's had and just putting it all out here that fight that he had in the end was i felt bad for him <laughs> he was just getting dashed around like a rag doll oh my day it was unfair <laughs> even during the fight he's like trying to upgrade skills he's he's trying to he's trying to figure out what he can do just to come out of this alive and he somehow pulls it out of his ass as usual and comes out on top you know what i've noticed that when it comes to these big, big fights or the, the fights that are important, he's always getting duppy. He's always just getting beaten. And I like that. I don't like an MC who has an easy road. You know what I mean? Unless I'm, I'm watching an isekai and I expect it. But in the shonen like this, I expect there to be some struggle here. And boy, does he struggle in this fight. Yeah. If it gave fun. When he removed his sword and his daggers so and his cape. So disrespectful. Oh, my He's like, oh okay, I can't, I can't get rid of mine too. <laughs> All right, let's you go. In, you in a hard fight. There was that one point, yeah, when, when Jinu was in the air and just getting duppy from all sides. And if it was just looking like, I don't know, like it was Dragon Ball Z, but gone crazy. I was, I was like, you know what? Uh, Luca would tell you, during the whole thing, I was like, ooh, 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 ooh the whole time. Because it was, I was like, wait, nah, fam. This disrespectful is the exact word for what happened here i actually like that we can visually see his fights getting stronger even though it's quite it's, i feel like it's quite hard to do because each of his fights are a struggle like you said however we can still see the increase in power the increase in skill on both sides for whoever his opponent is and him as well so i actually feel like that's 
that's great and I want them to keep it I don't want it to end up feeling like stagnant like it can do in some animes but I don't even fear that for this anime no I don't the story is good yeah and also I like the way that you're getting kind of like an episode where it feels like not much happens and then you get an action-packed episode because that's where you're getting all of your world building that's where you're getting all of your story I actually like the changes that they made to Juhi's story and made her a little bit more of a person with that weird dynamic with her mom and them not believing in her versus her personality and why she is kind yeah. of introverted and worried and can't believe in herself. So I like the way that they're putting the story together in general and the way that they are putting it on the screen. Done really, really well. Love the fight in this episode as well. Oh, it was done really well. So, obviously, it's a combined 10 and 11, so um, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. I think that the episode 10 built the world up for me, gave me a manager. Look, what they did with manager Anne as well, actually utilising the stealth skill, seeing what's going to happen, scaring the hell out of him in order to make sure he keeps his mouth shut. That was a brilliant piece of writing, and it was shown brilliantly on screen. And then, obviously, we already talked about it. The fight in episode 11 smashed it completely for me. And, and, and to make matters worse, he has to now go and fight a horde of, of knights and some mages. And he, he's running out of steam. And like they ended it at a point where you're going, what's going to happen next? I think they, it was brilliant for this point. And so for me, 10 out of 10. So if only Taysik could look at this fight and learn, before he came against Jinwoo because going full force from the beginning is what you need to do. I'm giving the, these two episodes a 9. I really enjoyed both episodes together. The fights were really good, especially, especially, especially the last one. First of all, thank you so much for watching our episode. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And if you want to follow us on Instagram, it's Bob Anime Insta. Peace.